chapter 6, um, and uh, we're going to go to verse 5 this morning. Matthew chapter 6, and then we're going to go to verse 5. Praise the Lord. Love you, children. You guys are amazing. I just love these kids. We've got some kids on Wednesday nights that are coming this morning. We want to do the best we can. Sister Jan has developed some very nice cards to reach out to these children. And I just really like to ask the church to pray for these kids. Amen. Um, Matthew chapter 6 and uh, verse 5. Praise God. And Jesus said, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking." I like to minister this morning by God's help and God's grace on the thought, the power of the secret closet. I pray God help us today, amen. Folks, there's power in the secret closet. There's power in God. There's power as we go to the Lord. And I believe in that. I want to help us today and reassure our faith and reassure what we have in Christ, who we are in Christ and I thank God that we're saved. I thank God that we are born again by the power of God, that we live for the Lord and we have a living hope in Christ. Father, as we come to you in the name of the Lord this morning, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for your presence in the time of worship. I thank you for the body of Christ. I ask you, God, now to touch me. Pray for the anointing of God. For, Lord, I am weak in body, but I pray to be strong in spirit. I need a miracle, Lord. I need a supernatural touch from you today. I have a message here that I believe that will help us in the church. God, I pray that those that are here by faith and those that are viewing, God, that you'd minister unto them, that you'll reach into their cars or their homes or their, their, their workplace or wherever they are, God. And I'm asking that you'd minister to their heart. Help us today, Father, not just to hear a word, but to be changed and transformed by it. I thank you, Father, giving you all the glory, asking all of this in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. And you may be seated. The power of the secret closet, there's no doubt in my mind that the devil wants Christians to forget about the power of the secret closet. The devil wants to keep Christians from praying, keep us from seeking the face of God. He, he keep us distracted to where we don't have time to pray. He wants to keep our minds so occupied that we have uh, we don't uh, even think about God or we don't even meditate or reflect upon the Lord. If the devil can keep Christians from praying, then he can keep us powerless. When Jesus speaks of going into the secret closet to pray, he's talking about a much greater than just the physical closet. He's talking about a people that take the time to seek the face of God. He's talking about those that have a heart for God, that desire God, that love God, that hunger and thirst after God and his presence and the righteousness of the Lord. Now, Christians can really be divided into two categories, whether the Old Testament, the New Testament, or even today. Number one is those who seek God, and secondly, those who don't seek God. And that's what you have today. You've got, you've got people that seek the face of God. They love God. They desire the Lord. And then you have people that really don't take the time to seek God. God. There's a difference between saying some prayers and seeking the face of God. And how many know what I mean when I say that? Because we can rattle off some prayers, but then there's a difference of really seeking the Lord. When God became angry with Israel over their idolatry, Moses pitched his prayer tent outside the camp. In Exodus 33 and 7, Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. And so really, the tabernacle tabernacle and meeting was the place of the presence of God. And they would go to the Lord and they, they would seek the face of God. In the midst of all of the idolatry taking place in Israel, there was still a people of God who took the time and the effort to seek God with all of their hearts. Uh, this seeking remnant of God emerged among the idolatrous masses in Israel. I mean, they had just, you know, they were just made that golden calf and worshiping that golden calf. And so there was idolatry. Not only were they worshiping golden, the golden calf or, or, or idolatry, 
but idolatry was in their heart. I mean, they knew that they had to go outside of the camp lest they too should fall into the apostasy sweeping over the people. Well, years later, we see in the word of God that the people under King Asa understood why God blessed and prospered them and kept them at peace with all of their enemies. In fact, in 2 Chronicles 14 and 7, because we have sought the Lord our God, we have sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. And, and so at one point in Asa's reign, an army of one million Ethiopians came against Israel, and Asa cried out to the Lord, and he said, O oh Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. And the Lord smote the Ethiopians and destroyed them. See, God, what I'm saying here today is that God fought for them. God vindicated his people. But this was the result of King Asa seeking the face of God. I'm trying to say here that we can see throughout the word of God that there is power in prayer. The devil wants to make you think that there isn't. God is still God. The Bible says I change not. There is power in prayer. In fact, King Asa said, it's nothing for you to help. What he was saying is that God, you're a big God. There are a million man army that's coming to destroy us, but he said, this is nothing for God. The Lord is almighty. God is all powerful. We Listen, I don't know about your God, but I know that I serve a big God. He's a strong God. He's a mighty God. He is our Lord and our Savior. Praise God. And there's nothing that's too hard or difficult for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine what takes place in the heavenlies when God finds a praying Christian? The devil convinces us that our prayers have no power or no impact. The devil's a deceiver. He's an accuser. He's a liar. And he doesn't want us to believe that our praying is effective. He doesn't want us to touch the throne room of God. He wants us to quit. He's trying to knock the fight out of you. That's what he's trying to do with me. He's trying to discourage me. He's trying to knock the fight out of me. He's trying to cause us to give up. You know why? Because the devil doesn't want this church here. I can guarantee you that. The devil doesn't want us praising God, serving God. He doesn't want us reaching these children. Do you realize that there's an outright spiritual attack and a war on children in the world today and in this nation today? You can see it on the media. You can see it in the news. You can see what's taking place. It is unbelievable. It's satanic. It's demonic. It's an antichrist spirit that's growing more prevalent today and the day that we're living in right now. The church has to be awake. We can't sleep. We have to be awake and alert and vigilant in the times that we're in right now spiritually. But the devil wants you to give up. But the Bible clearly shows us in the Old Testament and the New Testament that our praying makes a difference. Elijah was a man that prayed and the heavens gave rain. He called fire down from heaven. He positioned himself to pray. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Where one puts a thousand a flight, two put ten thousand a flight. The early church prayed and shook the place where they assembled. Hallelujah. Oh, shortly after God gave King Asa victory over his enemies, Azariah the prophet came to him and said, the Lord is with you while you're with him. If you seek him, he'll be found by you, but if you forsake him, he'll forsake you. In other words, what the prophet was saying, if you stop seeking after God, if you stop yearning after him and calling on his name and all that you do, he will forsake you. Jesus said this, and this is conditional. Jesus said in the New Testament, if we confess him before the Father, he'll confess us before others, amen, before men. But if we don't confess Jesus, then amen, then he won't confess us before the Father. I'm just saying here, my friend, that if you're with God, if you're for God, if you're a seeker of God, if you believe believe God. If you love the Lord, I know that God will be with you and God will hear the cry of his children. Amen. Azariah the prophet knew that because of God's great deliverance, the king would be tempted to become proud and turn to the arm of flesh, turn to himself or his own strength rather than the arm of God or the power of God by faith. And this is something that we all have to be careful about doing. We start thinking that we're the deliverer instead of God. The Bible says, have no confidence in the flesh. Every time Israel sought the Lord, God had blessed them, the Bible says, but when in their trouble, they turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him and he was found by them. The people knew where their power and their victory had been, my friend. It was seeking God with their whole heart. Israel enjoyed rest as they sought God in prayer. They enjoyed the rest and the peace that only came from God. Now, that, this doesn't mean that they didn't have problems. It doesn't mean that they didn't have trials, but because they fell on their faces and because they cried out to God, turning 
to him in total dependence that God was always there with them. I want you to see this. It's very clear in the Bible that God helped them and God strengthened them and God fought their battles and he delivered them. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible also talks about King Uzziah. And as long as King Uzziah sought the Lord, God had prospered him. Because Isaiah sought God, the Lord strengthened him and brought order to his kingdom. But in prosperity, the king had quit. He quit seeking the face of God. And pride had kept in, uh, crept in, and his heart was lifted up. And Uzziah turned to the arm of flesh rather than depending upon the Lord. And he ended up a leper, dying in shame. And, of course, in the Old Testament, leprosy is a type of sin. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about the secret closet, okay? The secret closet, the power of the secret closet. Uh, the other day, I, I picked out an old book in my office, and I've, I've got so many books in my office now that I'm having trouble trying to find certain books. You know, there's a book I thought I had lost. There was a book that's out of print, and so, and, and so I, I had, uh, it, it was the book on Call on Sip and Saints by David Wilkerson, and uh, Pastor Jerry had given me this book, and so, uh, and somehow I, I had misplaced it. I couldn't find it. I looked everywhere, and all all my briefcases. I looked at my office. I looked at my car. I looked at home. I looked everywhere and I couldn't find it. So I had to go online on Amazon and I had to find this book that was out of print. I paid something like 60 something dollars for this book because it was so important and so rare. But anyway, it was out of print. Well, I'm looking for this other book and guess what I found in my office the other day? The other book called The Sip and Saints. That's what it's getting so bad about, you know. But this book I, I had found, it's written by E.M. Bounds and it's called The power through prayer. And E.M. Bounds was a mighty man of God. He was a man of prayer. He spent several hours a day in prayer seeking the face of God. And I've read it before, but there are times that I feel that my prayer life just needs a jump start. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You feel like, man, I just need a jump start. And sometimes the car battery can be low on power. And so you just have to get a jumper cables and give it a little, a little more juice to get it started, you know. And I'm hoping that this message will give you more juice to help you to jump start your prayer life and your praying. Hey, man. I have several books on prayer, but just because we have books on prayer doesn't mean that we are praying people, okay? They can be inspirational. They can be challenging. They can be convicting. But the fact is the church needs to get back to finding that secret prayer closet. I want to have an agreement here today. We've got to get back. I'm not, I'm not just your pastor. I'm talking about the church of the living God. We have got to get back to finding the secret prayer closet. When talking about a prayer closet, I'm simply talking about shutting yourself up with God, giving quality chosen time to yearn after him. It's seeking his face. It's calling upon the name of the Lord, crying out to God with all of your heart. You see, a prayer closet means having a prayer habit. It's about disciplining yourself to come before God. To, 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 it's to answer when the Spirit is drawing you, when you can feel the compelling and the drawing of the Holy Ghost of God, that you're not resisting the Spirit of the Lord, but you're coming into the presence of God in that prayer closet. It's a heart that says, I I've got to get alone with God. I must pray. I have to get alone with the Father. I want to spend time in the presence of God. It's like Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. I know that we can be busy and we have many responsibilities and obligations in life. We can be like a, a Martha that's running here and running there, but no time for God. But Mary says, Jesus is here. The presence of God is here. The Lord is here. Everything else can wait, but I just want to come into the presence of God and I want to pray. Hallelujah. Oh, this secret closet can be most any place. Sometimes uh, the secret closet is in my office and I'll just spend time in the presence of God and seeking the Lord there. And sometimes uh, the secret place or the secret closet is in Morgan's room at our house. It's the upstairs. And I call it the upper room and sometimes I go up there and I seek the face of the Lord. That might be my prayer closet. Sometimes it's in the kitchen at the house and I'm pacing back and forth uh, at home. Sometimes it's right here in the sanctuary and I'm, I'm at the altar kneeling at the altar or pacing the floor here, crying out to God. That can be my prayer closet. Uh, sometimes it's in my car, just driving down the road, and I'll cry out to the Lord. In Bible college, I would literally get in our walk-in closet at our apartment. I, I, we had a walk-in closet and with all the shoes and everything and the clothes, and I would go in there, and I'd shut the door, and I'd just get alone with God. I thank God. I love that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
in the dormitories, it was in a big meeting room on the 11th floor. Sometimes it, it was a cubicle at work, and I would take my lunch break, and I would get under the table. This is how crazy I am. I, I would get under the table in my cubicle, and I would just cry out to God. I, I wasn't loud, but I would just cry and many times weep before the Lord. Oh, the kind of praying I'm talking about has to do with intimacy with God. It's a long time with Jesus. Jesus warned against hypocrisy in prayer. He warns us about this. He drew a dramatic distinction between those that seek God in a secret closet and those who pray so they can be seen by others as being holy. And this has to do with the motive of the heart. See, God looks at the motive. Jesus was talking about those who just like to put on a religious show. They just like to put on a religious display. They talk up a good talk, but they don't have a good walk with God. You see, my beloved, hypocrites are pretenders. Hypocrites are actors. They're fake. They're, they're phony. They're not real. People who act holy to receive the praises of men. And then Jesus said, and when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, uh, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Now, this verse doesn't mean that you can't pray corporately. It doesn't mean that you can't pray in public. It doesn't mean that you can't pray together in a church setting or as a body of Christ. It has to do with the motive of the heart of praying. Are, are, and are you praying to seek God? Or are you praying to be seen by men? You see, our flesh loves to be applauded. Our flesh loves to be commended. Our flesh loves to boast. But God cannot use our flesh. I'm talking about the fallen Adamic nature, what we might consider the lower nature. The old Adam cannot be redeemed. God cannot use our sinful nature because our flesh cannot be remolded. Our flesh cannot be sanctified. When we were born again, God does away with our flesh and makes us a new creation in Christ Jesus. And that's where Christ dwells in the new nature in us. Our flesh has to be totally cast off. It has to be left to die. And this isn't easy for the Christian life. But this is the sanctifying process of the work of God. In Galatians 2 and 20, I been crucified with Christ, Paul said. It's no longer I that live. I'm not living for myself. I'm not living for the flesh. The flesh has been crucified. It has been put down. But now I live for the Lord according to the will of God and for the glory of God. Paul put it like this. He said that you put off concerning your former conduct. Then he says the old man, that's the flesh. That's the endemic nature. That's the lower nature. And he says which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's where Christ dwells within our hearts and that you put on. Notice this. He says you put on the new man. That's the new creation which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. So we have the spirit of God, the new nature in Christ Jesus, but we also still have the old fallen nature. He says don't give in to that. Put off the old nature. Put that down. He says crucify that that, uh, so that you might live according to the new nature in the will of God according to the purpose of God. Put off the old man. Put off the flesh. Put off the old Adam. The fallen endemic nature with its corruption. Uh, and put on the new man and the new creation. Uh, don't live according to the fallen nature which grows corrupt. Uh, but live in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a new life. A new beginning. It's a new way. <laughs> You see, the hypocrites love to pray, or they want you to believe that they love to pray. They pray in church. They go to prayer meetings, uh, but they have no prayer habit. Uh, prayer meetings and church, uh, and church services don't take the place uh, of that secret closet, does it, church? And the more time that we spend in that prayer closet, the greater prayer meetings that we'll have. I promise you that. And the greater services uh, we'll have in the body of Christ and the greater manifestation of God's power that we will see. Listen, God doesn't hear the prayers of the hypocrites because they're not praying to God. It's a show. It's a display. They're praying to themselves to be seen by men. They have their reward, which is the temporary applauses of men. But they have no power that comes from God. I want you to understand this. They have no power. They have no anointing. There's no change, no effect, no impact. Now, the message today in which I'm preaching to you, I'm not just going to talk about the hypocrites, but I want to talk about good, honest, 
loyal, believing Christians. Amen. Maybe it's just me, but, but it seems to me that believers seem to be, over the years, moving away from prayer. It's like they're moving away from the prayer closet. Our lives are busy, and life becomes chaotic. We've lost interest in spending quality time with God. In fact, many churches are so busy, and people are so busy, that now we're eliminating services. So now we just have Sunday morning only. We don't have time for Sunday night. We don't have time for Wednesday night. We don't have time for Bible studies. We only have time for God for maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours at the most on a Sunday morning. And we're moving away from spirituality to now we're dealing with a worldly church. We're dealing with a carnal church these days in America. At least I can speak for this nation. People have lost their interest to come into God's presence. They've lost their interest, interest to worship and to seek the face of God. Oh, they love to cater to the flesh and what makes the flesh feel good, but they, they lost their interest to seek the face of the Lord. The vast majority of people only pray in church or at mealtime or with just a few words to God before going to bed. And you know that what I'm speaking here is the truth. It's possible to get out of the habit of praying. It's possible to get out of the habit of praying. And the reason so many Christians don't have power in their lives is because they don't have a prayer life. And they pray maybe once a week or on Sundays or whenever they feel like it. I, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not saying they're not saved. I am not saying that they don't love God. But I'm just saying that our hearts are losing the fiery passion to spend Holy Communion with our Heavenly Father. Listen to your pastor today. And by the grace of God, we need to get the fire back. Hallelujah. When you get the fire back, it eliminates all excuses. I promise you that. When you have the power and the passion and the fire of God in your heart and in your life. We may not be a big church, but we don't have to be a cold church. We may not be a big church, but we don't have to be a dead church. We may not be a big church, but we don't have to be a hypocritical church. We don't have to be lukewarm or the kind of church that has lost its first love for Christ. We're not dead stones. The Bible has has called us up and raised us up to be lively stones and living stones. You don't have to be lukewarm. You don't have to be dead. You don't have to be cold. You can have the fire and the passion of God in your heart and in your life. It can burn within you. We have made alive by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we have the greatest weapon in our possession. We have the weapon of prayer. And we can go to God with boldness and with confidence. And we can come to God anew in a living way through the veil of the flesh. And the Bible says, let us draw near with a true heart, with full assurance of faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's what God wants. That's what God desires. The habit of daily drawing near to God is meant for every one of us. Every person, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I mean, whether you're in ministry or not, we all have a ministry of prayer. A lot of people say, well, I'll just leave it up for the pastor. That's his job. Well, it's all of our responsibility. I, I, I'm trying to reach all people. I love, I love the young people. I, I love the young people. I love you all. I, I love everybody, but I, I do have a, just a special passion for the young generation today because I look at them as the upcoming church, and we want to we deposit something of God into them. We want them to know the word and know God and know his presence and know his spirit and know what it is to, to develop that kind of prayer life where you're faithfully coming into the closet of, and closing the door and shutting yourself up with God. That's really what Jesus is talking about here. But it, the habit of daily drawing near to God is meant for everybody, every one of us. The reason so many don't have power in their lives is because they, they don't have a prayer life. I'm not saying they're not religious. I'm not saying they don't function within the church. I'm just saying we're lacking the power of the Spirit. Listen, I, I, the, 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 what God has been dealing with me is that the, I don't want to preach to you with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. I want the Lord. Now, I, I've been sick for, this is the 10th day now I've been sick. I can't seem to shake this crazy cold and and, of course, during this time, it's hard to pray. It really is. It's hard to feel the presence or sense the presence of God. But I know that God is faithful. And I know, I know that he's calling the people back to himself. It may be a remnant. Maybe it's not. I told you weeks ago the church is going to get smaller. I didn't think it would be our church, but I just thought the church would get smaller. But God, it will become more powerful because God has a remnant people that have seek, that will seek the face of the Lord. There is absolutely no power with haphazard on and off again 
praying. There's power in powerful praying. D.L. Moody said every great move of God can be traced to a kneeling figure. Somebody that sought the face of God. That shut themselves up in God. Now Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 6. Your father who sees in secret. So God sees in secret. He sees into the very depths of our hearts. He sees our lack of interest. He, he sees us giving plenty of time to other things that we think are more important or have greater importance than him. He sees us coming to him out of an afterthought. He sees us coming out of conviction or condemnation. But listen, God sees all things and God knows all things. This secret closet is any place where the Christian shuts out the world and shuts himself up in and alone with God. Jesus said, but you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, he says, pray. In other words, when you go into your closet, don't start praying until you shut the door. Now, <laughs> now, hold on a second, okay? <laughs> Praise God. Now, th this is different than corporate praying. And th this is private holy communion that you're shut up with God praying. This means you don't talk to God with a cluttered mind. Shut out all the thoughts that would cause you to drift away from God. Shut, get all those thoughts out of you that would cause you to be distracted. Be awake and focused, not wasting words, not thinking of something else. It's easy to get distracted these days. It's easy for our minds to wander. But God will give us a disciplined mind, a sound mind, a mind that's controlled by the Spirit of God. And and there are those who pray for long hours and yet they're powerless in their daily walk and they wonder why answers don't come. They wonder why the prayer is not answered and why don't they have victory. It's because they pray with the closet door wide open. They, they leave the door open for distraction and God doesn't answer half-hearted, insincere prayers. When you go into your closet, shut the door. That's what Jesus said. Shut the door. Turn off the cell phone or leave it someplace else where you can't hear it ding when you get a text or a phone call. When I go for a drive and pray, and to pray I'll tell my wife, you won't be able to get a hold of me. My cell phone, I shut it off. I don't want to get anybody to, to call me or text me. I want to get alone with God. I'm going to bear my heart before the Lord. I'm going to spend time in a secret closet of prayer. Hallelujah. And we must realize the devil will come to interrupt you. And he'll do his best to get your mind onto other things. And he'll distract you. You know the phone doesn't ring all day until you start praying. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the way it works? I mean, that's just the way it is. Amen. All, all day, no phone call. But once you start praying, all of a sudden, the phone begins to ring. Beloved, the discipline, this discipline isn't popular among the church, but it's absolutely necessary. If you're to meet with God and be heard by God, then we have to be where God is. In the secret place, that's where God can be found. In the secret place, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said this, pray to your father who is in a secret place. Do you see that? You circle that in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6. Pray to your father who is in, help me out here, what's it say? In the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. The secret place is where you're alone with God and there are no distractions. You know that God is present. You know that he hears the cry of your heart. The secret place is the undistracted communion with the heavenly father. You are on holy ground. It's just you and God. That's the secret place. God has invited you to come boldly to the throne of grace and behind closed doors. And when you walk into God's throne room and shut the door behind you, it's just you and God. And you don't have to be fake and you don't have to be phony and you can be real because you're not, it's not, it's not men you're trying to impress. It's not your pastor you're trying to impress. It's not others you're trying to impress. But it's just you and it's God. When you walk into that place, you're alone in his presence. And you are, you are his only concern. You walk into the throne room, you shut the door behind you, praise God. With all, with our cell phones today, it's hard to have undistracted conversations with somebody. You know, that's just the time that we're living in and it's just the way it is. But if someone is asking to see me and if my time is limited and 
And while we're talking, they're always distracted with their phones. It's not going to last long. And I would just say, come and see me when you have more time. But yet this is how we treat God. God says, come and see me when you have more time. There are other things that are more important to you right now. No, my beloved, I'm trying to tell you that this is God that we're coming to. And the Bible said that we come a new and a living way. That's the veil of the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ. When it talks about that in Hebrews chapter 10, it's talking about the cross. It's talking about the blood. It's talking about coming a new and a living way. And when you go to seek the Lord in prayer, shut the door. Shut it so that nothing and nobody can enter in. Not pride, not self, not distractions, not interruptions. Literally shut it. Spiritually shut it and bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. A prayer closet also implies quality time with God. A prayer closet implies quality time with God. In the Old Testament, the people couldn't approach the altar with a lamb that was blemished or blind or lame. It couldn't be sick. It could not be diseased. They had to bring their very best to God. They had to bring their very best to the Lord. And a lot of times people would give God their leftovers, the diseased animals that they didn't want. And But listen, God doesn't want our diseased prayers. Hey, man. Come on, church. He doesn't want our leftovers. He wants quality time with his people because we're God's chosen. We are God's children. And when I'm when I'm with my kids, I I I want quality time with my kids, not not distracted times, because I love them and they're my children. And I and I give my life for them. They're mine. We're blood. If you know what I'm talking about. Oh, that we would come to God with undistracted time. I just want to spend time with the Lord. Not out of obligation, not out of condemnation. Oh, but because I love him. Oh, because he's my Lord, because he's my Savior. Oh, he's my Redeemer, and I love the Lord, and I desire to be in the very presence of God and be near the Lord. That was the heart of Mary. I'm sitting at the feet of Jesus. Uh, Other things can wait. I love my Jesus. I love my Lord. I love my God. Oh, God help me. (laughs) What kind of time are we bringing to our closet? I mean, really. Do you come... (laughs) Do you come to God with your best time? Or do you come to God with your leftovers? Did you come to God weary and tired after a busy day? Or are you basically dragging yourself into his presence? And really, this describes a lot of the church today. I see it. I don't want that to happen to Word of Life. If you if you want to see revival, if you want to see a move of God, if you want to see even this church grow, we've got to have a people that can find that prayer closet again. I don't know. Maybe maybe you've got to go and you you've got to go uh, find the key that opens the door. Go get the key and find it and open that prayer closet and get back in it and begin to seek the face of the Lord and to say, God, I got to have you. I got to have the Lord. And you bear your heart before God. That's what's going to make a difference. If you're tired and if your mind begins to wander, then be honest with God about that and cry out to the Lord and ask God to help you. Many times, how many know what I'm talking about? When you go to pray, all of a sudden your mind begins to wander and you're thinking about other things. That's distracted praying. But you can ask God, God, help me to, uh, to have a disciplined mind. Ask God to put that hunger and desire and to pray in your heart. If you're fighting with your flesh, then tell God about it and ask God to help you. If you're struggling with your faith, ask God to strengthen and to renew your faith. Just go to your prayer closet, shut the door, and get along with God. But it just seems today that people are not interested in what I'm talking about. They're not doing it. It's important that our mind and heart be where our lips are. Isaiah spoke in Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah spoke of the kind of the burnt offerings and the sacrifices that God would accept. And these kinds of sacrifices would be accepted on the altar of God. But then in Isaiah chapter 56 verse 7, it says, For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Now, there, there seems to be a connection. There seems to be a link between bringing the sacrifices to God and prayer. 
as those who join themselves to God. You can read on in the scriptures there. It's those who serve him. It's those that love the name of the Lord. It's not the lame or the half-hearted sleepy sacrifice. It's not a last-minute obligated offering. It comes from the heart that's consumed with a love for the Lord Jesus Christ. One that constantly cries out to God saying, Lord, I come to you to know you today. I want to be led by you. I want to be corrected. I want to be instructed by you. I want to learn obedience to understand your way. I want to know you more. I want to be in your presence. That's what I'm talking about. With this kind of heart and motive, there's no doubt that God will hear our prayer. There's no doubt that he'll hear your cry. And he'll bring us to a place of holiness. And God will bring us to a place of joy and a place of power. The grace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And we'll discover the riches of his glory in the secret place. Hallelujah. Shut up with God. The tabernacle, the tent. Hallelujah. Praise God. God will meet us there in the closet with the door shut. It's never time wasted. And as we wait on the Lord with a patient heart, God will show up. His presence will be evident. Your prayers will be heard and God will answer them according to his will. For the Bible says the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Being in the closet means coming before God for only one purpose and that is to pour your heart out to God. Now, How many know what I'm talking about when I say that you pour your heart out to God? How many know, hallelujah, I mean, you pour, you hold nothing back. You, you pour your heart out to God. Oh, hallelujah. I know that God will meet you in that place of brokenness. God will meet you in that place where you seem, where there's pain, where you're hurting, where you're lonely. But God comes to the broken and contrite that are in heart and spirit. God, hallelujah. God comes to you, praise God. Being in the closet means coming before God to pour yourself out. It means that everything in you reaches out to God. And all your heart and all your soul. It's not just going through a religious routine on a Sunday morning or Sunday night or a Wednesday night. But I mean you, you have a relationship with God. And you have learned to pour your heart out in your mind and your strength unto God. What matters is that you come to him with all your heart. Jesus said that when we go to our secret closet pouring ourselves out to God with undistracted prayer, our father will reward us openly. Jesus said, and your father who sees in secret will reward openly. God will show up. God will answer. You will, yeah, you will openly see the results of your secret time with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just have a few more minutes here. <laughs> Praise God. But even, even when attacks came, listen, there, there are many rewards that, that come to us from the power of the secret closet. But there, there, there's one thing I want to look at today. There's, there's one thing I want to look at. The Bible says this of Jehoshaphat. It says he sought the Lord with all of his heart. Do you, do you see that there in the scripture? In 2 Chronicles 22 and 9. And because he sought the Lord, he enjoyed 35 years of order in the kingdom of God. He, of peace and of order in the kingdom of Israel. And he had power with God and power over all the all of Israel's enemies. And even when attacks came from all sides, God quickly stopped them because the people began to immediately seek the Lord. I mean, there, 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 there was always order, never chaos and confusion. Even when the enemy gathered their forces together to try to destroy Jehoshaphat. And you can really look at this in the spirit and how Satan might try to attack the child of God or the church or the ministry of the Lord. And but Jehoshaphat Jehoshaphat called for a fast and he called for prayer and the people gathered together and they cried out to God. That was the only thing they could do. They didn't have in the natural the weaponry to be able to destroy the enemy. They had to have God. Their backs were up against the wall. It's either God or it's over. Amen. We've got to have the Lord. And so they began to cry out to God and they're, 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 they called a fast and when they did that the Lord intervened and the Lord helped them and the Lord delivered them. Oh, but there was never chaos or confusion when they cried out to God. Why is that? Because they saw the Lord when the kings did not seek God they had no peace they had no order see what I'm trying to say today is your kingdom is your home and if you don't have a prayer closet a daily habit of seeking God then you have no power to bring order to your household 
The devil can bring chaos to it, at all, uh, to it all, to your job. He can bring chaos to your family, to your kids, to your relationships, to your marriage. You see, the power of the secret closet is power over all confusion. The power of the secret closet is power over all disorder in your life, in your family, in your job, in your church, in your business, in your ministry. Amen. Isaiah 65 and 13 says, Behold, my servants. Notice this. He says, Behold, my servants shall eat, but you shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. He says, Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart. Notice he says, My servants, my servants, my servants. I'm trying to tell you that there are blessings as we serve God. There are blessings as we shut ourselves up in that holy place. There is power when we shut ourselves up in the secret closet and we seek the face of the Lord that God says are my servants and my servants my servants shall not be hungry my servants shall drink my servants shall rejoice my servants shall sing for joy of rejoicing hallelujah that's what God will put into your heart oh, man mm. praise God those who don't seek God They'll be empty, and they'll be famished, and they'll be dry. They'll be wandering about with no power, no victory, no joy. And that's what I see today. <laughs> that's what I see today. Where's the power and the joy and the victory in our lives? It's when we go to the secret closet and we shut the door and we seek the face of God. Not making excuses of why we can't pray, but you're crying out to God in holy communion with a holy God because you love the Lord. I desire to be in his presence. I desire to worship him. I desire to know him. And I give myself to God. And I want the Lord to teach me his ways, correct me if I need to be corrected. Lord, speak to my heart. Bring revelation of the word of God into my heart, God. That's what I want. Oh, my friend, yet those who shut themselves up with God, pouring out their hearts and their souls to him, seeking him in everything, they'll have power. Hallelujah. They'll have authority. They'll have spiritual strength. They'll have victory, praise God, because they've shut themselves up with the Lord. They'll be led by God into a place of spiritual rest and fullness, and that's what the Lord desires to do. May this message help you to get back into your prayer closet. May this message inspire you to pray. May this message give you hope. May this message give you strength. Let your mind be stayed on God. Hallelujah. Commune with him. Yearn after him. I don't know how to say it any more clearer. Just yearn after God. Yearn after the Lord. I'm hungry for God. We've got, Lord, what's happening today is our lives are becoming so cluttered that God, we're, no room for God. No room for God. No room for holy communion with the Lord because we're so busy. Find that closet, commune with him, yearn after him. Throughout the day and everything, call upon the name of the Lord in your spirit. Call on out to the God in your heart, and you'll know his power and order in your every step of life. In every step of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we stand together, please? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Church. Oh, God, help us. Amen. Lord, help us, Jesus. Praise the Lord, Almighty God. I apologize to you today for being sick in body. <laughs> it's hard to preach when you don't feel well. You're struggling with your voice and your body is weak. But the message is true and the message is clear. I want to find that secret closet. Amen. I want to shut myself up with God. I want to be in His presence. 
I want to love the Lord with all my heart. I want God to have his way and his will in my life. If you want to see power and authority and victory in your life, then we have to find that closet. If you have to go dig up the key to unlock that door, then go find it so that you can get in that place where you can shut yourself up with the Lord. You can cry out to God. <laughs> and the Lord comes and visits you with his presence and his power and his glory. See, I don't, I don't want to be an entertainment Christian. I don't want to be an entertainment church. I want to be a church that has fire for the Lord. Their hearts are set ablaze for God. They mean business. They have a relationship with the Lord, intimacy with God. They're not pretenders. They're not hypocrites. They're not praying just to be seen by men. But the motive of their heart says, I just want to be in his presence. I want to be near the Lord. I want to be near God. Let me ask you, my beloved friends, with every head bowed, every eye closed, just listen to your pastor for a moment here today. Do any of you feel at all the tugging of the Holy Spirit in your heart that's drawing you to commune with God? Do any of you feel that in your heart? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. You feel the tugging of the Holy Ghost? I pray that you do the tugging of God that wants to draw you close to Him, to commune with Him? Is there anything in your heart that says that you want to know God? Anybody here today? I want to know God. I want to know God. I think of the Apostle Paul and, and he knew the Lord and he experienced the power of God. He experienced the Lord in his life and God used him in mighty ways. But he said he wanted to know Him and the power of His resurrection. Paul wanted to experience God on a daily basis. I don't want us to become into a religious rut. I don't want us to do that. But I want us to be a people that are seekers after God. I want to find that prayer closet. There is power in that secret closet, my friend. And what I'd like to do here today, just for a few moments, is I'd like to call you to come to this altar. And I'd like you to spend some time with the Lord as the Holy Spirit is drawing you, as he's tugging on your heart. Oh, hallelujah. Just come and step out of your seat right now. And just, just come and find a place this morning to pray. Let's pair our heart before the Lord. Let's cry out to God. In my heart, God, in my heart, I love you. In my heart, I worship you. In my heart, I cry out to you. Come and find a place at the altar. Find a place to pray. Come on, church. I'm calling the entire church to come. Come on. God will meet you. I'm asking you, Lord, to renew my prayer life, to renew my heart. Come on. Lord, I want to find that secret closet of power. Lord, draw me to you, Jesus. Find a place where you can seek the face of God. I mean, get down to business. I mean, you're crying out to God. Oh, Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of the Lord, God, I'm asking you to touch these wonderful men and women of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, help us to find that prayer closet. And help us to shut the door. And help us to come to that place of heavenly communion, that sweet communion with the Holy God. Where I shut out all distractions, any kind of hindrances that might get in the way. Where I can just seek your face. Where I can just pray. Where I can cry out to you. Where I can commune with you. Hallelujah. That's what I want in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch my brothers in the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Touch our hearts, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Touch our hearts, I pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Almighty God, touch us, Lord. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Mighty God. Oh God, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I want to find that secret place, God. Oh Jesus, where I shut myself up with you. Where I cry and bear my heart before you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord, touch us today, Lord. Touch us, help us, Lord. Put the fire in our hearts, God. Put the fire in my heart, God. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your heart says, I want God. Your heart says, I want His presence. Your heart says, I want a close relationship. Your heart says, I just want His word. I want God to speak to my heart. I want God to change me. I want God's will in my life. There's power in that secret closet. And the church needs to go back to it. That it might discover what's there in the Lord Jesus Christ. That we're just not going through a religious routine. But we have met God. We have met the Lord. I didn't just come to church today. I've come to meet the Master. I've come to meet Christ. I've come to meet the Lord. I've come to be in His presence. Hallelujah. And I'm going to cry out to God. I'm going to bear my heart before the Lord. And I'm going to say, God, I need you. And God, I can't make it without you. God, forgive me for all of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me, oh God. And I repent before the Lord. God is our defender and God is our protector. And our victory is in the power of the Lord. It's in Christ. It's in God. He's the one that holds me together. He's the one that brings peace into my heart and peace into my home and peace into my family. He's the one that delivers me and heals me of all my sicknesses and all my diseases. And I can trust Him and I can go to Him and I can pray and I can bear my heart. I can cry out to the Lord. Oh God, I pray in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Worship Him, church, this morning. Jesus, meet us here, Lord. Meet us here, Lord. Meet us here in this place, God. Don't forget the secret closet. Don't forget your relationship with God. Don't forget that divine communion you'd have with your Savior. Hallelujah. Let's make this a secret closet today. Hallelujah. We praise God and we worship Him. Oh, hallelujah. How I need Him. I need Him. I need Him. I need Him. Jesus, oh God, draw our hearts to you, Lord. Draw us to you, God. May, may you do this work in our city, Lord that you would begin to draw the hearts of people to you, that you'd spiritually awaken us, that we find that secret closet of prayer, 
and we shut the door to where it's just you and God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Would you sing that, Abby? That's such a pretty song. Perfect for this message. Hallelujah. My Lord. speaking to our hearts here. I know he's speaking to mine. I know he's speaking to mine. Find that closet. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Let's stand together. Can I have the worship team come up here? Before we leave, can we sing King of Glory one more time? Let's worship the Lord together this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's sing this together, church. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man.
That's it. I just want to be with the Lord in His presence. Amen. Tonight, we have choir at 530, so Christmas cantata choir members come on back tonight. 
and uh, we'll begin to prepare for Christmas, which is just a couple months away. Thank you for coming today. God bless every one of you. Amen. Father, thank you for this opportunity we've had today to come into your presence as a body of Christ and to worship you. I pray that this message would have spoken to our hearts, that we'll make some changes and adjustments in our lives, that we'll find the key to that closet, that secret closet. Lord, that we can go and pray and shut the door and seek the face of God. I pray in the name of the Lord that we would take this to heart. God, that you empower your church with your presence. Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord that we would be seekers of God in these last days we're living in today, that our hearts would not grow cold, not apostasy, but God, that we would just have a greater hunger for the Lord. Make room and make time for you, God. Thank you, Father. Bring us back tonight, I pray. God, we love and praise you as we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless every one of you today. Thank you for coming and being a part of Word of Life service this morning.